Hi, right, Paola, how are you doing? What's, what's your name, Paola? Hello, I'm Paola. My name's Paola? Yes. Is it? I didn't know that. Anyway, um, nice to see you. What have you been, uh, what have you been growing in, your, in your, your garden? I've been growing orchid flowers. Orchid flowers? Honestly, I've got no idea what they are, but they sound cool. <laughs> um, well, my pizza tree's uh, nearly fully grown now, um, but there's no, there's no, well, it's got, it's growing the bases, but like the tomato and the cheese and stuff hasn't grown on, so maybe that'll come in future <laughs> weeks. Anyway, anyway, off topic. Um, as you know, as kids, we have been uh, learning about different ways we can be rooted in God. Isn't that right? Yes. Some of the ways we have learned about this is about being about gratitude, remembering God's promises through worship, and uh, having good influence influences around us. And last week we learned about being obedient to God. Awesome. And this week, week six, I think it's week six. Yeah, it is week six. We are going to be learning about uh, how we can be rooted in God by serving, serving other people, serving God's other children. Serving God, by serving God we can serve our family, we can serve our friends, our family members. But what does serving mean, James? What does it mean? Well, I looked up in the dictionary and it had lots of definitions. It was about 20 different results. Um, so it can mean to, to serve food, I like that one. Um, it can mean to help people, um, to spend time, to work, um, and to give honour and to be obedient. So there's lots of different, lots of different, lots of different things it means. Serving is an opportunity and a privilege, uh, and we should do it with joy, and it's a great experience to have. Mm, and some people don't uh, they feel like they can't serve because uh, they feel like they have nothing to give. But actually, everyone has something to give because God's given everyone um, a desire to serve and something that they can contribute to other people. Yes, it says in Romans chapter 12 that God has given each of us a special gift to use. And what, is, what are your gifts, James? What's my gift? Well, I have been told that um, I've got a particularly good gift for making pancakes. Um, so uh, I, will, I will attempt to make a pancake. Um, and then you can, you can try it in a bit. That's my gift. What about yours? What what, what gifts have you have you got? Okay, I like worshiping and uh, serving others by helping them worship God by singing. By singing. Yes. That's cool stuff. So, um, this is actually turned off. There we go. Would be a very nice pancake. Chef James. Turned off. Chef James can't even turn it on. So, <laughs> um, exactly. So. Serving God, um, the great thing about serving is um, it's really simple. We just need to serve each other. And by serving each other, um, through cooking and other things, um, by serving other people, we're actually serving God. Yes. There are a lot of different examples of serving Jesus. And uh, any example, any, any other examples, James? Is there examples? Yes, there are. Um, so it says in Mark 10, 45, uh, that Jesus didn't come um, to serve himself, but he came uh, actually to serve other people. Yes, our, decide, our motivation to serve should come from the love of God, uh, because God loves people, so we, love, we also love people, and mm -hmm. so that's how, why we serve others, because we, we also love them as mm -hmm. God loves them. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh god, what is that smell? Smell, well, it could be the pancake. Uh, oh, it could be my feet actually. Oh, oh. James. <laughs> James. I mean, yeah. Well, the thing is, um, yeah, it's, it's like when it comes to sort of spring and summertime, um, it's quite nice to take your, um, your big clunky shoes and socks off. Um, but obviously, over the winter, um, it, it can it can it can build up a little bit of a maybe maybe a smell. <laughs> there are a lot of good things about flip flops, but there are some bad. <sighs> Imagine mm. like going around walking around with flip flops and like no socks, and you're just getting your feet dirty, and you just like after a long day, your feet are just dirty. You just get home and it's smelly. It's not that nice. Hmm. <laughs> exactly. In Jesus' time. Um, in Jesus' time, uh, they didn't have any shoes on socks, 
Um, if you could afford to pay for shoes and socks, you wore sandals because that's just what they wore. Um, so you can imagine, um, maybe it's like, like how I can smell my feet. Um, maybe there was a bit, you know, people might have been a bit more smelly back then. So they actually formed a tradition um, where, I mean, like nowadays, if we go to someone's house, maybe you'll we'll offer them a coffee. Um, but back then, they used to wash each other's feet. Isn't that right? Yes. Mm. Do you think there were a lot of people or servants that wanted to wash people's feet? I don't, I personally don't think so. Mm. Uh, well, let's read a bit from the Bible about this. John 30, 13, 3 to 5. Mm, yeah, it says um, that we, we learn from the Bible that washing people's feet, um, it was servants' work, and only the absolute lowliest of servants would do that. Um, so when Jesus got on his knees, hands and knees, and washed the feet of his disciples, um, that was, um, it was a really big thing, and it proved Jesus' humility. And even though he was even more important than the Queen or Boris Johnson or your parents or whoever you might think is important. Yeah. Mm. See, uh, the man they believe was the Son of God, uh, washed their feet and sent a, sent a powerful message to the disciples and uh, sends a powerful message to us too uh, because he was, Jesus was washing the feet of his own students and how they should, and this is how they, they should treat their friends, family, even, even our enemies. Mm, exactly. So washing, uh, washing feet was a dirty job. Um, it was one of the dirtiest jobs a servant could really do. But it wasn't too dirty for Jesus. Uh, and if Jesus was willing to wash other people's feet, then um, we should be willing to serve and, and contribute to each other. Isn't that right? Yeah. So for instance, something we should uh, be afraid of or dread. Uh, it should be something that brings us joy and we don't have to we don't have to wash people's feet as Jesus did. Uh, mm. We can just help someone while bringing them a cup of coffee, doing, helping mom washing the dishes. It's small things; so it doesn't have to be anything big. Mm. Well, I decided. Um, I thought I'd serve you, Paolo. Actually, I'd find a way to serve you with my gift. Well, we'll find out if it's a gift. Um, <laughs> people tell me that I'm good at making pancakes. Oh, look at that! It's a bit of black. Um, <laughs> Crunchy. Mm, so I, I, I just I thought I'd serve you by, by making you a pancake. Thank you very much. Tell, tell me what you think. We'll see if it's um, if it's if it's nice. <laughs> mm. Oh yes, lovely, excellent. Even though there was some black and a little bit of undercooked. So, uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, well, you see, serving is fun. It's not that anything too bad, is it? Exactly. Psalms 100, uh, verse 2 says, To serve the Lord with joy. I think cheerful, a cheerful person is more pleasant than a person who is around us that might be grumpy or angry. Um, I think mm. someone said, James, you could be difficult and wash your dishes. Mm. I don't Sorry, know. <laughs> that sounded wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it's fine. Like, right. if someone said, James, could you go and wash the dishes? How would you respond like? Oh, no, I hate dishes. No, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> or you could go and respond in a cheerful way. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love washing. We, dishes are brilliant. I love washing dishes, mate. Yeah, I'll wash the dishes. Well, I probably wouldn't respond like that, but <laughs> it's more cheerful. <laughs> exactly. Um, Awesome. So it would be pretty awful if uh, we all went around um, in a sort of a bad, having, a, having that kind of bad attitude and being grumpy and unwilling to help. Um, but Jesus was a great example of how to be uh, a willing servant of God. Um, he even died on the cross for us um, and he served others um, because it was, uh, why was it? Let me check. I've lost my place. He served others because it was simply who he, yeah, it was just who he was. It was he had the heart of a servant, even though he was the king. Yeah. Mm. Uh, an example of this would be in Matthew 23, no, that's wrong, 25, oh. 35, and to 36. And, and then Jesus says, 
The Savior of the world repeated, repeatedly humbled himself to show us what never lost my plan. To show us to be the greatest uh, of all, you must be the servant of all. Mm. So we have to serve others. Exactly. And as we mentioned earlier, the Bible says uh, that we all have gifts and special talents, I think, and things that we can use to serve other people. And uh, maybe you're good at baking. Or maybe you're good at, uh, um, maybe, maybe you can serve others um, like when they're not well or they're poor, you can use your gift to help them out. Or, yeah. Maybe you could be good at computers and helping church to put the words on the screens. Mm, or perhaps God's given you a special gift uh, at praying and you can pray with your friends uh, by asking, uh, asking them what you can pray for them about. Serving is one of the easiest things to do, I think, because you just have to give yourself and uh, just be, be a helping hand, and you have to have the right attitude about it and be uh, joyful when you're doing it. Exactly, it's all about uh, serving other people. Um, it's not about what can you get from it or um, or anything like that. It's about other people. What can I do to to help serve the other person? Yeah, we shouldn't be. We kids, we shouldn't be too proud when we're doing it, like, I'm too good uh, to do this uh, or to do that or I don't want to do this because I am better or things like that. We should be humble and uh, really do uh, follow God, Jesus' example. Mm, exactly. It says in Matthew uh, 23, verse 11 to 12, that the greatest among you must be a servant. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Yeah. Mm. Serve. It's easy to serve the ones that the people that treat us nice, or when your parents are not telling you off or something, you're just nice to them. Uh, you should you should be uh, nice to everybody. You should serve everyone, no matter uh, if they seem mad or angry or you don't feel too happy with them. And that's because God went above uh, our feelings and really loves serving others. Exactly. It's like we mentioned at the start, um, serving starts with God. Um, there's a really cool verse in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 7 to 8. 6, 7, 8, I call that. It says, um, Do your work with enthusiasm. Work as if you were serving the Lord, um, not as if you were serving men and women. Remember that the Lord will give a reward to everyone, slave or free, for doing good. Let's work as if we're serving the Lord, nor ourselves. Uh, sometimes in this world, people can take photos of themselves, doing good things to inspire others. But God is asking us to serve others just because we love and we serve Him, not themselves. And Jesus did, didn't do these things, these good things. He didn't do them because people would look at him and say, oh, this is good. Oh, he's doing good for others. But he did them because uh, it, would sh it would show the people around him uh, how to be uh, nice people, good people for God. Exactly. We have to keep the focus off. Oh, that made a weird noise. We have to keep the focus <laughs> off ourselves and, and put the focus on others. Uh, let's say um, people that you really love, and when they go out of uh, their way to do something for us and um, it feels really good doesn't it and that's how we should treat others we should always go out of our way to, to serve them without seeing what's in it for us I think the best way uh, to serve others is by sharing Jesus with them mm. and for many of us that's pretty scary isn't it sharing and talking about Jesus with other people uh, it can we can come across as pushy or mm. we might be worried that we offend people when we do it and we talk about our faith. But one simple way to share Jesus with them or with others is by telling our own stories, eh, our own testimonies, and our own experience with God. And uh, we live in a world where people love hearing stories and other people will be way more likely to listen to you. In terms, Jesus can transform their lives. Uh, what do you say to them? Your words have power. Hmm, exactly. Well, that being said, in terms of talking about words of power, it's time for a memory verse. 
it's time for a memory verse, which is from the Bible, which makes it very powerful. Yes. So, um, it's week six now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a shot at this, and I'm not even going to look at the screen first. So, actually I will have a quick look at the screen. <laughs> okay, I can't remember. Okay, so, so, just as you accepted Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Um, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives build up on him. And then your... Will okay. your roots dry? Then your roots will... No, then... then it doesn't even say roots. Faith. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught and you will... Overflow. You will overflow with thankfulness. Colossians 2, verse 6 to 7. Okay, okay. I've got some, I've got some remembering left to do. Um, do you want to have a go? Oh, God. See if you can remember it. No, I don't think so. I don't have a good memory. Okay. I'll, I'll give it a try. Awesome. Just as you have accepted. 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 Accepted God. Oh God. Oh God. This is why I don't do this often. Well, I'll tell you what. Just <laughs> read it off the screen, yeah, and then you can remember it. Awesome. Just as you Just accepted, accepted Jesus, Jesus as your Lord. Lord. You, you must continue, continue to follow him, him and let your roots grow down into him, him and you let your lives be built up on him. Then you will, your faith will grow strong in, in the, the truth, truth that you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Colossians 2, verses 6 to 7. Anyway, we'll try and remember that for next week. I'm getting better at it. I um, think they're doing better than us at this, I'm pretty sure. They had good memories. You probably are. Um, well, this was fun. We had pancakes, we had lots of different things. Let's quickly pray before we finish. Um, so, Lord, um, thank you very much for uh, this time, uh, this video that we've just watched, well, made, um, for the Wiz Kids to watch. I hope they enjoyed it. Um, thank you for the pancakes that we made. Uh, thank you for the, the lessons that we learned today about serving other people and help us to learn how to serve other people and to serve you and by serving other people in our daily lives and in your name amen amen awesome so this week was week six which means it's week seven next week couldn't have worked that one out um that'll be good fun won't it and yeah i will see you we'll see you in week seven see you in week seven bye